Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen Healthy Fine Dining Series. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today with St. Luke's University Health Network, bringing together doctors and chefs to create healthy new menu options to be featured at their restaurants. Joining me in the kitchen today is Dr. Ray Durkin, along with Chef Anthony Bonnet of Mishulu. Hi, Nicole. Thank Welcome, you. Welcome, all of you. Thanks for being here Thank in our you, kitchen doctor. today. Sure. Thanks. Thanks for having me. What are we making? Well, we will be preparing a uh, pan-seared bronzino. Uh, we're going to be pairing it with some uh, Papas Bravas or nice. finger, smashed fingerling potatoes, uh, a pepperad, which is basically a melted down peppers and onions with raisins and capers in it. Mm. And we're going to make a, uh, a balsamic uh, veal stock reduction. A lot of Mediterranean flavors yes, happening yes, today. Yes, yes. It's like kind it. of like a very Spanish dish. Okay. Let's get started. So we'll start off, uh, let's start off with getting the sauce rolling. Okay. okay so we have a pot here and uh, we're just going to take some very simple ingredients. It's... Um, it's a combination of, it's almost like a variation on a, on a beurre blanc. Oh, you know, okay. but like with a beurre blanc, you would use white wine and of lemon course. juice. Uh, in this, this case, we're using, wine. in this case, we're using balsamic vinegar and red wine. Wow, so really bold flavors yes, happening. Yes, so, so we'll use, it's like almost like a, a, a equal parts of the red wine and the uh, balsamic together. Okay, and you're going to reduce that down? Yes. We're going to put some shallots in there okay. just for flavor. And we're going to strain it all at the end so the shallots don't really just slice them thin or, or cut them a little rough, it's fine. We're going to put a little bit of garlic in it, mm -hmm. okay? And we're just going to let that go and let that reduce down, okay? Perfect. Uh, fingerling potatoes, they're a great potato to work with. I love fingerlings. They're small, mm -hmm. they're shaped like fingers. <laughs> uh, they vary in sizes a lot, so when you're cooking them, you know, be careful. Some will overcook faster than others. others. That's a great tip. Uh, so these are already cooked. The only thing we do with these, we cook them. When they come out of the water, we let them cool down a little bit, and we smash them a little bit with fork smash them. All right, so you just boil okay. those and then smash boil them with them a fork. Boil them and just smash them. We're smashing with your hand, and that's Easy it. enough. Okay. We're going to put these right into, into a pot here. Okay. I'll put that aside. And you said Papas Bravas, which that's the classic it's got, Spanish it's, recipe. It, it, it seems like it's one of those recipes that's done a lot of different ways in yeah, a lot of different places. Definitely. They're pan fried. They almost always have um, some kind of paprika or some kind of pepper element in mm -hmm. them. We're gonna put a little bit of chicken stock in there just to kind of get them hot. So this okay. is gonna be kind of more like a mashed potato than a fried potato. It's gonna, they're gonna have this similar consistency. We're not gonna okay. mash them too much. We're just gonna kind of fold everything together. Okay, so right now they're just kind of getting hot. Okay, and we'll let them get hot for a moment. Uh, and then we'll add the other ingredients into that as, as they're getting heated up. But Okay, great. Well, you work on the next step. I'm gonna to talk to the doctor for a few minutes, so welcome. What made you go into the line of medicine that you're in? You're a cardiologist? I'm a cardiologist. I'm actually a, an interventional cardiologist. Okay. And um, I went into in cardiology, you know, two out of five Americans die of heart disease. And, yeah, uh, unfortunately. So, you know, when you're young and you're training, you go through different things. Uh, it just, you know, it was an opportunity to make a difference, I think, in a lot of people's lives. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah, and more specifically, I'm an interventional cardiologist. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I do a lot of procedures through catheters. Um, put stents in heart arteries for people who have blockage, mm -hmm. put heart, heart valves in uh, through catheters, and, you know, help people avoid surgery. Yeah, well, that's so, always a good thing. Yeah, so it's a, it's a fulfilling uh, profession. Nice, I bet it is. Thanks. I want to ask you, uh, doctor or um, Nicole, to mm -hmm. keep an eye on these and start okay. folding in the ingredients. You okay. like to cook, doc? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. dabble? I dabble. My, okay. my wife does most of the cooking. Okay. okay. <laughs> We're just going to fold in... Uh, a little bit of the smoked paprika. Mm -hmm. Smoked paprika is great. It adds smoke flavor. So much it flavor. Adds, it adds that that color. Don't go too crazy with it. <laughs> I already added some shallots and garlic to it. We're going to add the parsley. Okay. Put a little salt and pepper because we really didn't season these at all. Okay. And potatoes can take quite a bit of seasoning. They, they do. And uh, we're talking about healthy cooking, so we'll we'll moderate our salt and we'll kind of taste at the end. Well, I'm going to let you jump in here, Doc, and, and do some of the mashing right. slash so stirring. So let's go ahead and just fold that together. Yeah, Doc. you go ahead and do that. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We now return to The Chef's Kitchen. Uh, That's the, smoked paprika. The pepperad is a really easy is a really easy dish to make. Okay. Uh, it's basically, and once again, a Spanish thing, mm -hmm. uh, just a combination of yellow, red, green peppers. These are poblano peppers. So it got a little okay. spice in there? Yep. Yeah. The poblanos nice. add a little, a little bit of spice. They also add a little bit of smokiness to it. Mm. The rest of the ingredients for the uh, pepperad are going to be, if you want to add in, doctor, are going to be the, the sugar. So we got raw sugar there. Hmm. Okay. And we can really add similar, it's just 
It's gonna gives it almost like this kind of like sweet and kind of sweet and sour with the balsamic, okay? Is there a purpose for adding the sugar at this point in the preparation? Uh, there's really not with this, because okay. pretty much everything can almost cook together, okay? Got it. So we're gonna add our balsamic. Just double check. Yep, we're gonna add our balsamic. Okay. Okay, it's a nice amount of balsamic just to kind of coat it down. Mm -hmm. We put our sugar, we're gonna put our capers. I love capers. Okay. One of my favorite ingredients. They have such That's a nice, nice pop of saltiness. They add flavor, exactly. They add flavor without having, and they do add salt, but they don't really, there's there's no fat. They're, they're a fairly um, easy way to add flavor to something without without adding too much fat or anything mm -hmm. else to it. We add some golden raisins. Same with the raisins. They add a nice yep. punch of sweetness. This is a Spanish preparation, but it really borders on being a very Sicilian sort of mm -hmm. style. And, you know, whenever you talk about Sicilian style cooking, it's always, um, uh, Golden raisins, olives, capers, capers sure. these kind of sweet and sour flavors together. So along with so, fish, right? So we have that going, and that looks great. And that's going to cook down into a nice kind of like compote, and we'll allow that to go. And that's pretty much all you want to do with that. So this is what it looks like when it's finished. Exactly. Right here. When we're finished, we're going to have it done. So it really now cooks you can down. this can you can cook this for two three minutes and have mm -hmm. it like a real quick saute. It doesn't have to be like cooked melted down so okay. much. Typically, piperad cooks down where it's very soft and it's like, mm -hmm. it's really almost like a jammy kind of thing. Uh, while we were talking previously, I, um, I finished this reduced down pretty well. And you can see I added a little tiny bit of cream at the end. Now this is where we can get a discussion about, about healthy cooking. And in a restaurant, you know, I would use a good amount of cream in this mm -hmm. to really bring this together and cream it out and make it taste very, very kind of like luxurious and, right. and rich. Um, these are some of the things that you can sacrifice at home when you're cooking healthy. Uh, you, you want your food to taste great, but it doesn't necessarily have to have such a, you know, over, over heavy, creamy or butter. Or, or. Yeah. So we're going to add the veal stock. Uh, the veal stock uh, could be bought at, at a store, at a gourmet store, uh, reduced veal stock. So we add that. And instead of adding, like, so much cream and butter, the veal stock's going to add a nice amount of, uh, give it a nice amount of texture. And what you're doing so, by not adding the cream and butter is you're really cutting down on saturated fat, which is the fat that's... That, you know, from a heart health standpoint, isn't good for you. Exactly. Uh -oh. We're going to put a little tiny bit of uh, aged balsamic in, and we're going to add a little more at the end. Now, we already put balsamic. The aged balsamic is going to give a little more sweetness and a little more depth to the texture. Okay, so we're going to let that cook down. Okay, we have our potatoes going. Our potatoes are pretty much where we want them to be at this point. Uh, we didn't fold in the aioli, so we'll think about that at the end. Okay, so all we're going to do is taste the salt and pepper and see where, that, where it's at. That's good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they so we can put these aside, and towards the end, we're going to fold in the, 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 uh, the aioli if we decide to. So we're moving on to the bronzino. Let me put this lid on here. Okay, and that's going. So, Doctor, tell me about the direct-to-cath lab. What is this? Well, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, two, two out of five Americans die of heart disease. Fifty percent of those are from, to, you know, to use a, a common term, heart attacks. Sure. And, you know, typically somebody will obstruct a heart artery. That's mm -hmm. what a heart attack is. And we need to get it open as quick as possible. So we have a system set up where people, actually the EMTs, identify the problem and bring them right in to where I would be wow. to open the artery. And, you know, we've had people who we've opened arteries within 12 minutes. And they go home the next day with a normal heart. And uh, so it's something we pride ourselves on. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We now return to The Chef's Kitchen. I find fish is intimidating to cook at home. It, and it, I find that people feel that too. Absolutely. And they go to the, they go to the supermarket or whatever their, their fish place is, and, and it's a fairly high premium to pay. Exactly. Um, and fish uh, is fairly expensive. Uh, rightfully so. I mean, the fish industry is difficult to maintain, but... Um, Bronzino is a good uh, a good option because it is a, a farm raised fish, so it comes from a really sort of well regulated aquaculture environment in mm -hmm. Europe uh, that is uh, has been really in business for quite a while. Uh, Bronzino has been been sold in America for probably 20 years now, and it's always very consistent. It's consistently sized, and uh, it really uh, remains a good option for kind of like a smaller bass. And the size makes a difference too, because you could buy a fish and have two portions from it for, for you and uh, your family, and it comes out great. So, now, do you ever roast the fish whole or cook yes, it whole? Yes, yes. You'll see it a lot in, in Italian restaurants or mm -hmm. Greek restaurants done whole. 
uh, done on the grill, done on kind of like a wood fired uh, wood fired grill. Right. Okay. You can keep your carcass if you want to. If you're feeling adventurous and you want to make uh, stock or something like that, you could do that. Okay. You know, okay. Chef, where, where do you like to get your fish from? Oh, you great know, question. You know, we, we were talking before. Uh, I go into a supermarket. There's seven mm -hmm. different kinds of salmon. It's exactly. it's confusing. It is it's, uh, to say the least. Very much so. And I think that uh, fish, in general, I think. Um, if you're in the city, you can always go down to the fish market, course, Samuels and Son, they yep. sell, or, or Ippolitos, they sell retail, and a lot of people don't know that. They're selling the same fish they're selling the restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I find even regular supermarkets, whether it be ShopRite, Giant, whatever, if they have, if they have a well-maintained uh, seafood section, they're going to have good fish. You can always ask to smell it. You can always ask to check it out. Ask the person behind mm -hmm. the counter, see if they seem informative, form a good relationship. Fish is the kind of thing, it's not like beef where it's USDA graded. With fish, if it's fresh and it seems fresh, then it's fresh. Uh, now, there's different qualities of salmon, as you were saying, you know, farm raised and different, different qualities mm -hmm. of farm raised salmon. Uh, just because it's farm raised does not mean that it's, it's bad quality. There's a lot of great farm raised that. salmon out there, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of really well regulated uh, salmon uh, farmeries and hatcheries out there. I'll so, go a step further and say the same goes for frozen seafood. Not all of it's great, but some of it's really, really fantastic. Really, absolutely. There yeah. are some good options. Yeah, it depends. And sometimes that's your better option than buying it fresh. Because absolutely. Because just because it's fresh in the case doesn't mean that it's actually right. fresh. Right, where it's, where it's coming sitting. from, uh, mm -hmm. IQF, uh, exactly. et cetera, et cetera. So here we ended up with two nice fillets. Bunch now, this is something where your fish guy could do for you. You'll take the bones out, but every fish has bones. That's another thing that people are scared about with their fish is, is getting bones. Most of the bones in a fish are always towards the top once you fillet it. They're towards the top of the head, so they're right here. Mm -hmm. So this is where you need needle nose pliers or pinchers or or some kind of uh, flat pliers, and you pull out your what we call pin boning. This is what you call pin boning your fish. You know, so when we get 20 pounds of bronzino in, we pin bone all our bronzino. Uh, and bronzino typically doesn't have a ton. You could mm -hmm. feel it doesn't have a so lot. You just run there. your fingers down. Yeah, it. you can feel it. There's usually on a bronzino. There's like three or four on the top, and and that'll and that'll be fine. And then, you know, make sure you're cutting off your belly part, so you end up there like that. And you always leave it skin on. Skin on. Bronzino is a great fish to eat skin on. Bronzino, like uh, like red snapper or like black bass, um, has great, really nice thin skin that that cooks up really well. Gets nice and crispy. Exactly. So I'll show you know, you that's how, where I'll most of the omega threes are too. Or so in let's Spanish check. Or. Let's check all the rest of our stuff, and then we're going to saute our fish. Yeah. Okay. Great. You can see how this reduced down nicely. Okay. Great. At this point, you can really let this go a little more and just put a little tiny bit of butter in it, or you could start adding more butter into it, almost like a beurre blanc. And that's where you have these options of, of being like uh, of the butter being part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think in this case, let's put. What are we comfortable with here? Doc. What do you think? Uh, again, moderation. Let's, let's say we were serving <laughs> right, four. Let's answer. say we were serving four, four, four guests here. We have four fillets. And we have our sauce. Yeah. Okay. And and you know you, you, you were telling me earlier that you can actually use mm -hmm. some things to add flavor that don't right. necessarily have exactly. fat in them. So I'd say use half the amount of butter you normally right. use and try and use some other whether it's spices Peppers or, or, or right. garnishes or things like exactly. that. I put two I put two little uh, cubes, which I think they're they're probably less than less than a tablespoon. Perfect. Okay. And when that all gets portioned out, and you whisk you're them be in, getting so much you still less. see that it adds a nice creaminess to it. Beautiful. It's got that nice buttery sheen. Yeah, exactly. It it's has great. the sheen to it. So I think you're achieving what you would need to achieve without putting a ton of, of, uh, of fat into it. Definitely. And at that point, you can even start adding your herbs. Like we said, we add chives, we'll add flavor. Perfect. Okay. So, Doc, what is it like to be part of the St. Luke's University Health Network? St. Luke's um, is a wonderful organization. I've been there 10 years now. I'm, I'm actually chairman of the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine. Congratulations. We've seen major growth. Uh, we have over 50 heart specialists. And, you know, I always say, you know, physicians need a good hospital to practice in, and hospital needs good physicians. And uh, I think St. Luke's accomplishes that. So it's, a, it's really a symbiotic relationship. That's awesome. That's great. Okay, we're getting ready to cook our fish. Okay. So I think salt. So just like you were cooking a steak or a piece of chicken, yep. you want to season it just the same. You don't need a ton of salt, but you know it's better to use like a nice coarse salt. You can taste it better. Pepper, okay. Don't forget the other side. Okay, a little salt. Pepper. 
Now this recipe, this dish I should say, is going to be on the menu at Mishulu yes. as part of the St. Luke's Healthy Fine Dining series that we're doing. It so. is, yep. Yep, we have it on the menu. It's been selling very well. Um, and yeah, I like it. It's a real, it's a real easy dish to execute. Uh, it seems like it addresses, it's kind of like a dish that um, it's like the person who wants something a little bit different you mm -hmm. know, would, would, would have. Definitely. Now, when you put the fish into the pan, you mm -hmm. immediately see it start to shrink up. Right. What do you do to keep the fish from from curling up like that? Is I think you can, use, you can use weight. You mm -hmm. can use, you know, on this case, this was just a real natural kind of like whenever you, your protein hits hits heat, it's going mm -hmm. to change a little bit. So right. I just think flatten out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're, if you're not using Teflon, you're using stainless or cast iron, just make sure it's well seasoned. Uh, so that's an important seasoned. tip too, is when right, you're cooking exactly. fish, especially with the skin on, you don't want it to stick to the pan. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We now return to The Chef's Kitchen. At this point in a restaurant, we can always we throw butter in the pan to finish. Not a necessary step. <laughs> okay. It's really, it's just like an indulgent thing that adds a little more richness yeah. to it. We I used olive oil. Our fish is searing nicely. You can see that it's searing nicely. Yeah, I mean, it looks it like it's almost cooking sure. all exactly. the way through. And that's what I'm that saying. Is like with, when you have fish like with skin, like red snapper, black bass, they have great skin. Mm -hmm. Let them cook almost completely on the skin right. side. As soon as you're ready to turn, you're pretty much ready. So, so it only I mean, when I look at all minute. the other flavors you have here, I don't think you need butter. No, I, don't, I would agree no, with no, that. No, you don't. It's a very olive oil-centric dish. <coughs> it's not a butter-centric dish. And again, olive oil is a good fat. It's a monounsaturated. Yes. It's uh, right. again, it has. You have to understand, it has calories. Sure. <laughs> but the fat that you're getting, you know, you need some fat, and that's a good fat. And it's a delicious fat as well. Okay. To our papas bravas, and we're going to uh, see how we can finish these up. So let's take this out because this is cooked already. Let's put this one on board here. We'll wait. Cook them. So nice. I would you say that nice... took maybe three, four minutes total. Yeah, it's a real easy fish. You see how you have nice, oh, crispy skin. I love Adds a nice, nice crispy texture. fish skin. Okay. I'm going to turn these burners off. Okay. Our piperod that we're going to serve is ready. Our piperod that, that we started got a little overcooked on the bottom, but you can easily just change pans on that. Uh, so I think we're doing good with that. I would just transfer it into another pot. Let it continue cooking down a little bit, and then you're in great shape. All right, so Papa's Bravas, these are pretty much ready to go. Okay. We're just going to, okay, we'll check the heat. We already checked the heat. Do we want to put the aioli in them? That was our big question. Yeah, a little bit. I say okay. go for it. I say, okay, good. <laughs> hey, we left the butter you know out of everything it's, else. It's Friday night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to live a little. So, you know? I mean, that little bit of aioli will add a nice amount of richness to it. Okay, and that was really, I mean... We didn't put any butter. A tablespoon tops. Yeah, that was like a teaspoon, really, yeah. I think. Well, you see it adds a little bit of creaminess to it. Absolutely. It made okay. a big difference. Yeah, they have the herbs. So, in the restaurant, the way we plate this is... I like to lay the potatoes out just so they almost match the, the size of the bronzino. Hmm. So, it's almost like they're hidden underneath the bronzino. Yeah, it's like a little surprise. Right, so they're just like that. That really does have a great smell okay. to it. Doesn't it? That smoked paprika okay. is so pungent. On top, sits on top nicely. Okay, we have our pepper on. Pepper on right on top. So many different things going on in there. I can't wait to see how this all tastes together. And our sauce, you could strain, you don't have to. It's just a little bit of shallots and um, you can keep it rustic. You don't often see red wine sauces paired with fish. I like this. It's yeah, very unique. Yeah, especially the red wine balsamic. Mm -hmm. And it goes well with the smoked paprika, goes I well with the potatoes. I think fish always needs a heavy hit of acid, be it lemon or yep. some kind of vinegar sauce. Yep. So I think it's going to work really nicely. Yep. Got some okay. micro herbs. We have our Aged balsamic. This is a 30 year old aged balsamic. Okay, we can finish with that. Wow. Okay, that's nice. Real nice kind of depth and sweetness to it, okay? It's nice dish for fall, too, for this time of yep, year. It's I agree. Got a little bit more going okay. on. Okay, we'll top with these. It's just a that really makes it look nice. Color. Okay, put a little lemon drop. This is like art. 
Isn't it? It's like watching an artist. It's, and it's, am, it's amazing. Yeah, what did this take, 20, 20 minutes? Um, exactly. You don't realize that at, at home, how. It's even easier in the restaurant when you have someone to clean up. <laughs> yeah, right. It's the most important thing. You're going to have to put that Hungarian smoked paprika to use. <laughs> Let's sprinkle a little bit of paprika here. Nice touch. Okay. This looks incredible. I can't oh, wait to taste. So, Doc, okay. everyone has to get in there. Thank you. You want a knife? Sure, thank you. You go first. All right, let's see. Okay, just dig in. I'm going to get some of that crispy branzino skin, some of the potatoes, the sauce. You got to get a little bit of everything in the bite. Pepper out. I'll go for mm -hmm. this one. There you go. Oh, Doc, dig in. Mm. Wow. It's a flavorful dish. It really is. There's so much going on, but. It's so well balanced at the same time. It's mm -hmm. not too much. Mm. It's excellent. Yeah. Mm. It's For being excellent. so light, you yeah. know, they saw how much butter and right. no cream. Just a little bit of that aioli went into the potatoes, but it's and the fish and the skin held, holds up very well. Really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this I really is like the dish. Thank killer, you. killer dish. And you have this on your menu. Yes, you do. on you the menu at Mushulu right yep. as part of the St. Oh. Luke's Healthy Fine Dining mm. series. Everyone has to go and try this. This I'll is really tasty. It. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Very good, very good. Thank you both for being on the show today. I had You're a lot welcome. of fun. great chef who really uh, showed how to prepare a nice healthy piece of fish. It's what people should eat to prevent heart disease and uh, I enjoyed being here. Uh, I always love being on Chef's Kitchen show. It's just a lot of fun. I love to showcase my recipes and uh, Stephen's always great to work with.